solo now that it's over. I guess what are your thoughts on the season as a whole? Um, man, it was a, you know, a rough season. Um, I mean, it's, just, it's not a season anybody wanted or, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I just hope next year that, you know, all the young guys, you know, can, uh, you know, learn from this year and, you know, work on their game and come together, <clears throat> you know, for, uh, you know, they can have a better year next year. What was Steve's message to you guys after the game? I think that's my question. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't know, just, I mean, honestly, I wasn't, I wasn't really listening because I was, you know, kind of in my own head, but just, you know, just, it's, it's, all, you know, it's hard for anybody, to, you know, to go through and it takes a lot of, you know, um, I forgot the word to use, just, I forgot the word to use, but you know, obviously, just to, you got to be strong mentally, and you know, persevere, and you know, and when the loss doesn't, you know, define you as a as a player or a person, it's just how you respond. Obviously, you've been in this program a long time. I got to imagine, or what were you thinking about when you say you're in your your head? I imagine you're thinking about the last five years. I mean, I was, I was just thinking about the game, um, just anything I, you know, could have did to, you know, propel us to the win or, you know, anything we could have did as a group to to do better. I mean, I mean that's just kind of like I mean, how I think as a player, just if I could have you know, done better, you know, to help get the win. Thanks, Solo. Solo, Iowa, this is Randy. Iowa State basketball has been built on – on four of your guys, Matt, Naz, Monte, George, yourself. Why don't, what's happened that guys just don't stick around for four years anymore? And I'm not talking about going to the pros either. I'm talking about coming and then getting into transfer portal. What, you know, what's going on there, do you think? Um, I mean, obviously, you know, everybody is in different situations. Um, I mean, I think maybe partly it's because, you know, um, you know, maybe like new guys coming in, come in, you know, with too big of an ego or, you know, cause obviously, you know, you're the best player in high school and when you get to college, you're not the best player anymore. And you gotta, you know, kind of work your way back up the ladder. Um, and I don't know, maybe, you know, just new generation doesn't really have, uh, I don't know, like the, the same mentality, but I mean, I can't speak on, you know, everybody's situation because, you know, it could be a totally different situation than that. All right. Thanks, Solo. All right, if that's all you got for Solomon, we'll be good. And then we'll have Jalen, Coleman, Land. Jalen, what was Coach Frome's message to you guys after the game? Um. It was a mixture of a lot of stuff, you know, since my last game um, in regular season. So uh, it was a lot. It was a mixture of, you know, farewells, um, things. First of all, the game, how it went, um, how the season went. It's kind of a recap. Um, so um, he touched on a lot of things. So, so it was a lot. Did he mention anything about his future at Iowa State to you guys? Or? Um, he, I mean, it was a mixture of a lot of things. Um, it's kind of hard to say. He touched on a lot of different uh, different topics. Okay, thanks. Jalen, you mentioned Steve kind of went over the year. I guess from your perspective, when you look back at the last few months, what stands out to you? Um, just kind of, you know, with this, although, yes, it's my first year playing at Iowa State and in this conference, but, you know, it was an abnormal year for me just playing college basketball, even from the beginning. But have a lot of cancel even with preps before the cancellations with the summer and having to work out in pods and not being able to, you know, build synergy and kind of build camaraderie with my team. So it kind of started um, weird from the beginning of the, of the year in the summertime um, before the uh, non-conference non -conference even started. So uh, it was abnormal to say the least, but um, I felt like 
I learned a lot about you know myself individually and as a uh, as a, as a teammate um, and as a man. And I feel like it, it allowed me to grow and build character. So uh, I'm appreciative. I'm appreciative of it. And I learned a lot. You know. You guys talked a lot all season about getting over the hump and getting that first win. Now that you're at the end, that didn't happen. I guess. What are your thoughts? Why? Um. So, I mean, I look at it from an individual, each game standpoint. Um, and, you know, I felt like looking at each game, there was always some type of um, thing that I could have done better individually. Um, and look at it from looking at it at that, from that standpoint, um, I feel like as a team, obviously, if everybody was at that standpoint, like we could all do a little bit more to get over that hump. Um, but um, unfortunately, that's not how kind of, it works. Uh, you can't live in retrospect, um, but I feel like, you know, the effort that we put forth today was good. And I feel like it was good as we had capped off the year, but it was just details, uh, focused things and strategy wise that we should, we could have done better. You've already had a longer college career than 99% of the guys. What's your plan you know, with the extra year of eligibility do you plan on using it? Or? Uh, we'll figure it out. I'm going to talk to my parents, um, talk to my family about um, like I said, although I played a lot, um, you know, I've been playing for a decent amount of time. I haven't really been actually playing um, due to injuries. Um, I've transferred from U of I, University of Illinois, and had to sit out. And then my following year, getting hurt, the year I was able to play, getting hurt. So it hasn't been like I've been playing, it, even though from the outside looking in, it seems like I've been actually playing for a long period of time. But I was actually out for a lot of my time. So I'm grateful for even being a healthy um, now, this last year, to be able to play in. Um, I'm going to build off of kind of my progression at the end of the year from the beginning from to the end, um, you know, from just playing, having repetition under my belt, and it's going to continue to get better as I play more. Jalen, Jalen, just way off beat here. Um, what do you think about the Illini, by the way, the way they're doing? I mean, uh, uh, oh, no, I, got, I still got some uh, – I got a lot of good friends. Um and um, mentors from U of I, and I can only commend them. Like they play hard, they jail well. Um, I, I got a lot of good relationships, even still on their staff. <clears throat> so, um, you know, I commend them. They they work for it, they earn it. Um, so um, I hope all is well. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Jalen, one more for you. Just curious for you personally. Um, I guess what emotions maybe do you feel now that either the season's over? I know you said you're not decided yet if you'll come back next season, but just that this season's over, I guess, what are maybe your emotions in general? Um, you know, it's just a lot. Um, I'm not really big. I'm not too much of an emotional guy. I look at it from a, a black and white kind of standpoint of what I could do to get better from an injury. Did I leave it all out there, even with losses? Um, one thing, I don't like to live with regret, and I don't like to play um, – I don't like to leave games where I feel like I could have done more from an effort standpoint. Yes, I'm going to miss shots. Yes, I'm going to do some things, um, some things that may be kind of out of my control or I can uh, tweak a little bit. But the effort, you know, playing defense, taking charges, um, leaving it out there, and I feel like I've done that um, throughout this year, and I can live with that. And that's why um, I'm going to continue to and – I, and I feel like I, would, I progressed individually. I try to be as efficient as I could. That was one of my roles. Um, Coming to, you know, Iowa State, um, be efficient. Uh, be around like 45 from two, around 40 from three, and shoot 90%. And that was kind of like my goal for the team and play defense and be a great leader. So um, I try to look at it from that standpoint and um, continue to build. Um, and that's kind of what my mindset. There was a lot of things I probably could have done individually each game that I feel like I could have done. But um, from a holistic standpoint, I feel like my effort was there. And it's going to continue to be there. That's who I am. Thank you. No problem. Appreciate it. You good, Travis? Any questions? I'm good, Jalen. I appreciate it, though. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me. Appreciate you. No problem. Do you have a statement, Steve, or should we just fire away? Um, you can fire away. I mean, the bigger the statement I would just make is, um, you know, I told the guys in the locker room uh, through all the adversity and things they had to deal with. Uh, and especially the way the game was going tonight, you know, they could have folded many times. And I think we got great kids in our locker room and great character guys. And they've done the right things all year. 
And so that's as a coach and as a leader, uh, that's why you disappoint in yourself uh, because you're not – the best part of coaching is to be able to sit back and watch your kids have fun and enjoy these moments, especially in March. You know, it's the best part of being a part of championship teams and winning big games is seeing smiles on those kids' faces you coach. And so – but Oklahoma was good, and um, but we made it a game at the end. But, you know, we just didn't do a good job enough, uh, you know, sharing the ball and – you know, running good offense at times. And then, um, you know, they're a very good one-on-one -on -one team, um, you know, and being able to just stay in front of guys. Steve, can you speak to your Iowa State job future going forward? You know, there's really nothing for me to say. Uh, one thing I can tell you, you know, so I know there's probably a lot of questions is that I'll meet with Jamie next week and, uh, you know, we'll sit down and talk. Next, next week, not next week, you said, I'm sorry. Next week. Yeah, okay. it's almost Thursday, yeah. So next week, yeah. Okay. Uh, trajectory. Travis, I can't. You cut out on me. Can you hear me? Yeah, barely. You're muffled for some reason. I could hear Randy fine. I just couldn't hear. I can't hear you great. It's just real quiet, but go ahead. I, uh, when, you when you look at the trajectory of the last six, I can hear you good now. Yep. When you look at the trajectory of the last six seasons, how do you feel like the program has gotten to this spot with the record that it is right now? You know, there, there's a lot of factors. I'm not, you know, going to go into everything, um, you know, but you and I both know, and we all know that this record's unacceptable for this program. Um, I've said it a hundred times. I said it since I've got here. We've got an incredible fan base. We've got great leadership. Ames is an unbelievable community. Uh, it's the best league in the country. We're playing a seven seed. They're top 25 in the country. Um, but with that, there's expectations uh, to be in the NCAA tournament and play deep in the postseason. And, you know, with that sweet 16, elite eights and, um, you know, I think that's the next step, obviously. But, um, I mean, there's a lot of factors, I mean, you could talk about. But, you know, the biggest thing I'll say on that is uh, we all know that this program can't be in this position. And it's got to get it's got to get back right. We've asked you a number of times, obviously, about if you know what your future holds. If, if you're not meeting with Jamie until next week, do you imagine going through this weekend still not knowing? I would think so. Uh, you know, Jamie and I have had conversations, like I said, we talk all the time, uh, but Jamie's obviously got a lot going on with, um, you know, um, selection committee and different things like that to where, you know, we'll, we'll meet next week. You know, that's the most I could tell you with that and being as I can. What uh, you, you touched on a little bit, but what was your message to the guys afterwards? Well, first off to the seniors, um, whatever they need going forward. And, you know, I got them, you know, whether that's to help them with agents or help them get jobs overseas or professional basketball or business world, whether it's now or in the future, I got you. I'll do whatever I can to help you. Um, no questions asked. Um, and I also just talked to Solomon. Obviously he's been with me five years. He's one of my first recruits here. One of our first recruits here. Uh, he's seen everything here. He's seen the good, the bad and the ugly. Um, but he's done a lot of really good, positive things, not only on the floor, but off the floor in the community. There's a lot of things he's done in the community behind the scenes that probably hadn't even got publicized that he just kind of does it, you know, on his own. Uh, phenomenal kid. Uh, very proud of him. And then I talked to J. Cole and just thanked him to where disappointed because he never got a chance to really see Hill Magic or see what it's like out there in the, in the uh, T-Mobile arena. Um, and what an amazing fan base. He just wasn't able to see that. And that's something we obviously sell in recruiting. Uh, but he's such an advocate. He was a great leader for us during the social issues that we talked about, you know, whether it was in person or via Zoom when it all started. Um, I thought he had a phenomenal year. I thought he finished really, really well. And um, he's going to do great things. And then obviously I just touched with, you know, Nate Schuster about, you know, being an everyday guy. And then Eric Steyer, you know, living his out his dream of a Ames, Iowa kid. And you know, I never forget that shot in Maui when his dad was out there. And to the other guys, you know, I just talked to them about, um, 
there's a lot of stories about programs that struggle. And then you look at a year or two later and they're back where they need to be. Now, I've been in a lot of different leagues and I've seen it happen over and over. And so I just talked to them about the things that need to change, um, the things we need to do better. And that, um, you know, we've got to address that and, and get better going forward. And then most of all, I just thank them for, you know, we left here in March last year this time. They went home on spring break and we didn't see them again to basically August of last year, of, of, of this past late July, August. A lot of times when your team struggle and go through what we had and nobody on this, you know, I've never obviously been through anything like this in my life and nobody in that locker room has either. But you could splinter, you could stop going to class, you could, you know, get in trouble, you can make poor decisions. I think our guys have done a great job of staying the course and like I said, showing up every day. Uh, we didn't get the results um, and that sucks and that's on me. You know, that's not on them, that's on me. But I just thank them for, for doing the right thing and being great ambassadors and um, being good, good, you know, student athletes. Obviously, we see the the wins and losses, but I was hoping you could give us a little insight what the season was like for your players from a mental health burden standpoint with the constant testing, the isolation, just what this season was like for them. You know, I can't speak for them, so I'll just kind of talk from what I, you know, when you view it. Obviously, it had to be extremely tough. Uh, there's a lot of sacrifices you have to make. You know, you could get home on a road trip at two in the morning and have a 7 a.m. COVID test. Uh, and then you go to class and then you go to practice. Um, you know, I think all of our guys, uh, obviously, we, are, we had our one little bout with COVID during the, during the season, you know, right around that K-State Kansas week. Uh, outside of that, our kids did a phenomenal job. You know, hats off to our athletic training program, uh, athletic trainers. You know, Vic and his personnel, Doc Schulman and his personnel, obviously Mark Coberly, those guys did a phenomenal job of making sure, you know, Michael Byers, um, you know, making sure our guys did the right things and, and, and were, were up to date on everything we needed to do. And so I'm sure it was a mental strain on those guys in a lot of different ways, you know, socially, emotionally, uh, even academically. Um, but like I said, man, I think these guys did an unbelievable job handling it. And that's why it's it's unfortunate the way the season went. Um, you know. Thank you. All right, thanks guys. Thanks, Dave.